Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I recently purchased a new case for our stream box, and I thought I would invite all of you along to watch me transition the stream box from one PC case, which is this old Corsair one on the left, into the new Cooler Master Silencio 400 on the right, so we can make it quieter and honestly look cooler. For those of you wondering what the term Streambox means, this PC is dedicated to encoding video and uploading it to whatever platform we're streaming to. It takes video inputs from both my computer and Nabarine's computer, combines them, encodes them, and sends them to Twitch or YouTube, depending on the situation. The reason we decided to do this case swap is this Corsair Air 240 is a little bit on the loud side. It's the loudest PC in our entire office, and we wanted to change that. Our solution to the noise problem is the Cooler Master Silencio 400, a case designed with silence in mind. It only comes with two fans installed, but both of them are very quiet, and as you'll see later, there's sound dampening a material on every single face of the case except for the rear. It's a very, very quiet case and comes highly recommended by Amazon reviews. For this particular case swap, all I'm going to need is a magnetic screwdriver, some canned air for cleaning out any dust that may have accumulated, and I like to use a headlamp. It's not really required, you just need to do this somewhere brightly lit, but the headlamp makes things a lot easier when your hands are full. I'm going to start, like I always do, by taking out the cables that are plugged into all the components of the computer. I'm going to just take this video card out because it blocks access to the cables that are plugged into the lower part of the motherboard. I'll give it a quick clean with the compressed air before setting it off to the side. Just a few more cables to remove now that the video card is gone. Now that that's out of the way, I can move on to the next step of removing the screws that hold the motherboard to the case. As you pull these screws out, make sure you put them off to the side so you can find them again. I often lose them. This operation in particular is why I recommend a magnetic screwdriver, as otherwise it's very easy to drop the screws and lose them under the motherboard. Now that I've gotten the screws out, I'm going to very gently, with two hands, lift the motherboard out of the case and set it off to the side for installation into the new PC. Before putting the motherboard into a new case, make sure you double check where the standoffs are. If these are in the wrong location, they can contact traces on the back of the motherboard, and a short plus power equals bad news for your motherboard. Also make sure to install your in-out shield into your new case, because otherwise you'll end up like me and install your motherboard twice. Now I'm going to very carefully insert the motherboard into the in-out shield using it and the standoffs to confirm that I have the board in the right location. While screwing in the motherboard, I make sure that I don't over torque the screws, I just go to hand tight without putting any extra strain on the PCB. Okay, so here is an adventure in micro ATX case building. As you can see, the power supply does not currently fit at all. It doesn't fit because of the drive tray, which I have to remove with this screw right here in order to get this PSU into the computer. I haven't run into this before because I don't usually use micro ATX cases, but it's uh, it was a problem and it made me worry for a second, but I figured it out. With the drive tray out of the way, I was able to easily slide in the power supply and mount it without any further issue, again taking care to make sure I didn't over torque any of the screws. With the motherboard and the PSU installed, it's time to put in some of the other hard to reach components like the hard drive and the solid state drive. Fortunately, this is normally a very easy operation and only takes a few seconds. This particular case has a very interesting way of mounting the SSD. There are these small pins that screw into the solid state drive that are then inserted into these small rubber grommets that are put onto the case. After installing the SSD and replacing the hard drive cage, it's time to plug in the front panel connectors and other connections at the lower end of the motherboard. I can get rather particular about this because I enjoy a nice clean look on all of my builds, even though this case won't have a window. Oh well, I guess it's good for airflow. With all the connectors that would be obscured by the graphics card now plugged in, I can install the GPU and capture card. And that's it, that's all the major components installed. 
I wish they could lick this clean forever, but I still have to install the major cables into the motherboard and GPU. The CPU power connector in particular is painful to install, sometimes literally. But as one of the most common reasons for a failure to post, it's worth a few scratches to make sure I've got it installed correctly. Once I have all the power cables installed, it's time to do a little bit of cable management in the back just to make sure nothing gets pinched between the case and the side panel. All that's left is to install the top panel, the side panel, screw them down, and peel off the plastic. Okay, and now, the moment of truth. Okay, so this is the monitor. That's normal. So the reason it does that is the capture card just registered as a tertiary monitor for this. And we have post. Which means I plugged everything in right. Hooray. Ah. And yeah, we're good. And yeah, Hooray. It's a touch screen. But I'm not going to show you my password. No, let's not do that. And you guys get a quick tour of how this thing works. Okay, so my Stream Deck is attached and working. Stand by. Let's go to OBS here and see if the NDI codec is functioning properly. I like how you still have the light on. <laughs> I mean, I'm a cool bean. Oh, a very, very cool, cool bean. bean. All right, so let's go here, go to display capture, display capture on, and let's switch over to DE. There it is. We're good. all good. We're good to go. And I'm getting bounces here from the mic. Yep. We're good. Ta-da! Everything's working. So, yeah, that was me doing computer surgery while Nab stood there and gave me moral support and very important camera support. Yay! Yay! She's the best.